Welcome to another Altera Central webinar. So we are going to run through the new georeferencing workflow inside GeoSlam's hub software. This is a beta, but it will be formally released in 6.1. You click on the ellipses here, you'll see there's an adjust to control function now that wasn't in previous versions. First, we're gonna export the reference points with the base offset and choose our folder. Then we're gonna review that. There's the six reference points inside the horizon session that we recorded, the six and a half minute session. We'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, control. If you look here, um, we have everything in metric, which is what the software requires. Pound sign name is required for the control point names, header. And then we want alphanumeric for the control points. Software requires this. And of course, XYZ, which is Easting Northern Elevation. Then we want to save it as a text file, tab delimited. Again, this is a requirement of Hub. And we can take a look and review what that looks like. And that's how it should look like. Now we'll go ahead and use the adjust to control function. And here we're going to import the newly created text file. And you're going to see um, that we need to be able to marry reference point one with the control point one. But if you shot the control in a different order from how you collected the reference points, which is what I did, we kind of need to go to, to the viewer here and review where those reference points are. And then of course, note where the GNSS control points are. <clears throat> so I'm just taking a mental note here and I'm actually writing down that reference point four is control point one, reference point five is control point two, and so on and so forth. And you'll see here's the notepad that I <clears throat> created a, um, a crosswalk table here, so to speak, so that you see that reference point four, five, two, and three equal one, two, three, and four of the GNSS control. Now I can properly map those by importing the text file. Um, number one, I'm actually going to exclude. I'm going to do that later. And number two um, is actually control point three. And then lastly, reference point five is CP2. And then we're gonna exclude points one and six. Again, the reason being is that's the start and the stop point. And that was not one of my GNSS control points. We're gonna go ahead and do a rigid transformation first. That's recommended first to see how things fit. And then you could also do a non-rigid as well. Um, there's some documentation I would review to determine whether your data is best suited for rigid or non-rigid. I'm finding if the, your control is good. Um, right here, you'll see my RMS is only um, two centimeters, two to three centimeters, and that's pretty darn good. So I'm gonna save that report, <clears throat> and I'm probably just gonna do the, the rigid uh, control on this one. Here's my uh, report. And again, there's my RMS when I click on the, the target or bullseye. If we go to the GeoSlam data folder uh, into the project folder, we can go ahead and confirm in the A2C folder, which is the adjust to control folder, the results.laz, and then all of the metrics here generated by the actual uh, adjust to control function. The results.laz is actually the adjusted uh, zipped cloud or LAZ cloud, but if you go up a directory, there's also another results underscore A2C file that's identical. Uh, not exactly sure why they duplicate it here, but you'll see I pick the A2C one for draw so that I can view the data and draw 
export the data so that it can be used in um, civil 3D or, or RealWorks or, or Ar ArcGIS Pro or wherever you're taking it. Again, ArcGIS Pro, it's better to have LAS files, so that's what I'm going to do here. You'll see here that I'm going to go ahead um, and verify my units, my XY. I've got that in feet, and those units are correct. You'll want to review that before you export. And I'm actually going to add a 3D point so that I can import my control. This, this step is not necessary. It's just so that I can verify um, that my data, my control is actually where it should be. Uh, even though my RMS was uh, 0.028 meters, um, that doesn't mean that it's, it's accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and import the control, the same text file, just to see that they fall where they should fall. And that is the case. Again, this part is not necessary, but uh, it's to me a, just a good check. And then we're going to um, go ahead and save the project. And then we're going to export the data to LAS file. So here I'm actually going to downsample to 2x just because I don't want the file so large and unwieldy in ArcGIS Pro. Um, but again, you could keep it at its native. Then I like to rename the LAS file so that it's not just cloud zero, so it's something meaningful. And then, of course, uh, hit the play button and then right click to go to the folder. And I like to move this or cut and paste this into a directory that's easier to get to for Esri software for Arc Map or ArcGIS Pro um, and put it into a simpler directory. And then you'll see here after I copy it that I'm going to go over to ArcGIS Pro and we're going to um, right click that LAS file because we have to do another step here. We have to actually define the coordinate system. Even though it's been geo-referenced, the coordinate system hasn't been defined. And you'll see here, those units are metric and they make sense. If you have oddball coordinates there, then you know that something wasn't properly adjusted to control, wasn't geo-referenced properly. Here, I'm gonna choose the XY, which happens to be NAV3 State Plain, New Mexico, Central Meters. And then the Z being um, NAVD 88 meters. Um, I might have actually chose depth there mistakenly, but uh, either way, we want to be able to select metric so that things line up properly. You can see our extent window on the LAS. And as we zoom in, uh, you'll see that um, our point cloud will start to render. We could increase the density of the point cloud here as well, but by, for now we're just going to keep the default. And you can see that things are lining up pretty well with the imagery. Keep in mind that the imagery, um, you know, has the angle of the sun is going to affect where the actual walls are, right? So the point cloud itself is going to be more accurate in this case than the imagery or the, the topographic background. Um, and so here we have a pretty good picture of the outside of, of my house and. Um, of course, we could scan the inside and then merge those together uh, because this is already geo-referenced. Thanks again, and uh, we really appreciate you tuning in.